What's going on everybody? Today we are going to be doing something a little different. We are going to be living a full day fully science based. So I waited at 161.2 like I said, but you can guys can see a little physique check. Right after I wake up with no pump, I should be pretty dry. So I think I'm around 12%. You can see the abs are, are there when I flex them, especially when I'm not flexing, they're kind of there. Um, I'm not looking the fullest to be honest, but it's all right. We're gonna build up slowly, getting off a cut, slowly going on to a calorie maintenance surplus. I'll explain what that means in a little bit, but yeah, let's go make some breakfast. All right, so the optimum breakfast, according to the book, would be a cup of oats, which I have right here. One banana, serving of fruit, it's about a teaspoon of cinnamon, and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, five grams of coconut oil, and a scoop of whey protein. So I'm gonna put up all this breakfast together, and I will see you guys once it's done cooking. Okay, so that it's all made, looking good. We're gonna eat this up, and we're gonna head to the gym. All right, so first thing I'm gonna go over is how I'm eating today. So as you guys know, I was on a cut in my last video. I finished up my cut, and now we're eating at what I'm calling a maintenance surplus. So I'm not lean bulking because that would be a little bit higher of calories, and I'm not maintaining. So I'm eating 15% higher than my maintenance calories, which I've calculated over time and using a macro factor and a bunch of calculations that I'll put on the screen right now. But based on the book, which is what I'm basing my whole day on today by Jeff Nippard. So shout out to Jeff Nippard. But I All right, so basically I'll do a little walkthrough of the thing I made so it makes it easy for you. So first off, you're gonna change your weight. Then you're gonna estimate your body fat percentage and change your body fat percentage. Everything else do not touch until you get the activity multiplier, which you can change based on how active you are. And you're gonna change if you want to be a surplus maintenance or a deficit. Change how much your protein you want per lean body mass, and then how much percentage of your calories you want from fat. Everything else will be auto calculated for you, so it's really easy. I do want to put on muscle with also losing fat, which is possible, which is what the whole point of this day is. Um, but my main goal is to put on muscle, so I'm eating a little bit more instead of a little bit less. So my breakfast is a little more calories than it's probably supposed to be, but I don't really care because again, I'm in a surplus. But yeah, I'm gonna be. Again, living, I'm going to be training science-based today, eating mid-workout science-based today, and eating post-workout science-based today. So we're going to get ready a little bit, and I'm going to take my pre and head out and go to the gym. One last thing I forgot to say is you are also recommended to drink about half a kilogram of your body weight before you work out. So for me, that'd be about 22 ounces. Um, so I drank 12 ounces already. I'm going to drink another 10 ounces. And then we're gonna make my pre and I'm gonna head out. So I also wanna talk a little bit about why uh, your pre-workout meal is so important as explained by the book and science. So basically um, your pre-workout meal needs to be fueled by slow digesting carbs that do not spike your insulin like oats, which is why I have so many oats and a piece of fruit, which has fast releasing carbs that will give you energy to start your workout through to the end of your workout. You also want a little bit of salt, so you can have some type of water retention because you don't want to sweat out all of your water. That is not good for you. You also need a solid amount of fast digesting protein, which would be whey. And you want at least, for me, it's about three grams of leucine with every single uh, meal I have. So the amount of whey I had easily had that much leucine in it, which means my muscle protein synthesis is being activated as much as humanly possible. Um, you also want to drink 22 ounces of water for me, which is about half a kilogram of your body weight uh, before you work out because you want to be fueled. And then during your workout, obviously you want to drink water and after. But before is the most important. It's about 22 ounces for me. So I need to drink another 10 ounces of water before we head out. All right, so we're going to be preparing the pre. I've been using Superhuman Burn from Alpha Lion. I have about a scoop left. So we're going to help you get a scoop out of this. And... Uh, Alright, so we're gonna start drinking the pre, we're gonna head out to the gym. I'm not gonna talk in the gym, I'll switch to a voiceover and explain everything that I'm doing, but remember I'm doing my full entire day today, fully science-based. Alright, so to start the workout, we do a warm-up protocol of 5-10 minutes of cardio. For me, that would be uh, 15 incline, 3.5 speed for about 7.5 minutes. I just go to the machine since I've earned 100 calories. Then you do foam rolling, which I stretch out everything I possibly can. The front and back leg swings. 
the side leg swings. And then I didn't really know what a prone trap raise at the time was, but now I do. So I uh, do a prone trap raise, not included here because I didn't know what it was. I did cable external rotations for both arms, which I only show one here. And I do cable internal rotations. You can do this with a weighted cable thing, or you can do it with a, a band like I did. And then you do uh, shrugs, and you are ready to start warming up. Alright, so if you want to pause here, this is what the whole entire day is going to look like for me. Now, this is not including warm-up sets, which I only did a warm-up set for the bench press because it wasn't included. This is a really old program as well, so everything that he does now is now a lot better, but this is a really old program that I just happen to have. So, uh, we're going to start with this type of warm-up period, which would be the bar of 15 reps, 40% of my one-up max, which would be 5, and then 50% for 4, 50% for 3, 70% for 2, I believe it is 75% for 2. And uh, yeah, just enjoy the music and watch the sets. The only thing I can say before I just let the music play is um, make sure all of your warm-up sets look exactly like your working sets. You want everything to like move the same way, you want to tense the same way, you want everything to move the exact same. That is the whole point of the warm-up sets. Alright, so now we're going to get into the working sets, which is obviously the same weight. You're not going to change your working set weight unless you cannot hit the reps that you're supposed to. For me, that was four. Obviously, I hit it um, pretty easily. And I just wanted to make sure I do like a power building style, so I'm trying to do a slight pause on my chest. I probably do not do a long enough pause for power building at all, but in the last set, I do emphasize it a little bit more. Um, I'm also wearing wrist wraps to make sure my bench doesn't get hurt just because of my wrist. So. Alright, so now we're on to the next movement, which would be shoulder press. Um, I did not have a seat in my gym that had a back on it, so I did a lot less than I normally could do, and I had to do a lot harder for him because you obviously can't lean back on a seat. So uh, the weight was a little weird, did not move as much as I wanted to, and it was a little bit harder than it should have been, but just ignore that. Um, also, reps will be sped up after the first two for most exercises, about two times, three times speed, so I'm not actually moving that fast. Alright, next exercise is weighted dips. So I was wearing about a 10 pound plate here and I thought it felt too easy so I ended up increasing the amount that I was uh, wearing. Alright, so after the dips, so I was about an hour into my workout, and I was like, alright, it's time to make a Gatorade, because of the information I was on the screen, so you can pause that, took off the pump cover, and did a low to high cable flies. Alright, and the next exercise is an isolateral tricep extension pull pressure, which I have never done before, so um, I had no clue what to do and no clue how good my form was going to be, but I made sure to keep it strict and I chose to go with a little bit lighter of a weight.
Alright, and the last muscle exercise would be a lateral raise, which I am not used to doing this many reps, so I went pretty light and it burned like crazy. Alright, and the last part of the workout would be this ab roller, which I uh, tried to do at first on my like on my uh, feet, like a normal ab roller would be, but it was very hard for me and I couldn't do it, so I ended up doing it on my knees, and as you see, as I do more reps, my form does get better in the next set, um, and then the last set I have my knees floating with my feet not on the floor to make it a little bit harder, but actually burn the abs really well, and I highly recommend it. All right, after workout, we're going to show off the pump and the little bit of abs that I still have left after eating meals and drinking a shit ton of liquid. Real quick before you listen to the rest of this clip, this was supposed to be like the first part of the beginning of the program, it's supposed to be lighter weight and just focus on form and making sure your form is perfect. So yes, it wasn't as hard, but as you got the program, it would progressively get harder. It wasn't as hard for me as it will be for an all person because my volume has been insane. But as the science says and as he says in the actual program, um, if you're used to high volume, it's not going to be hard because it's not meant to be like that. Like that is not how your volume is supposed to be. What I do right now is not maintainable forever. So this, doing a program like this is effective, science-based, and supposed to be maintainable forever. I did get a pump. It wasn't insane. I do like the way the bench was oriented, but I will be doing a power building style. So once I start the actual program that I'm going to do, I'll be doing a power building one. This is a hyper hypertrophy push-pull legs program. I'll be doing a power building full body program from Jeff Nippert as well. Um, so I can do a review on that once I start that, but it's not a bad, maybe try out the exact workout I did. I'll put like the whole entire how you break it down, everything on screen. It, it felt pretty good, um, but I am starving. So there is no such thing as a 30 minute anabolic window after your workout, that is just not true. You have within four hours of your pre-workout meal as an anabolic window. And if you work out fasted, then yes, there is more of an anabolic window which also I can put a little bit on that right now on screen, but I am starving because I just get hungry after I work out. So I'm going to warm up my meal, which does fit the post-workout nutrition. Um, so yeah, let's get into that. All right. So we got my sweet and sour chicken right here, which I made. I'm going to link the video to this meal right here. Hopefully it is uploaded before this one, but it should be, it is really good. Um, so also put out like what you need post nutrition post-workout, sorry, nutrition-wise, for like, according to his scale right here on the screen. Um, so the only thing that this meal really wouldn't have is a little bit of fruit, which he recommends, but there is pineapple in here. So I'm gonna count that as my little bit of fruit. It's also a lot of calories, which it's probably more than I'm supposed to have. It is so, so good. The one thing I will say, the Gatorade mid-workout, I think actually helps a lot for me because I have really, really long workouts. So that workout was about an hour and 45 minutes with like not including, well, actually including cardio on the warm up and stuff. But usually I get really tired throughout the middle of my workout. I had the Gatorade today and I did not feel tired through the middle of the workout. I had energy throughout. So I do recommend having some intra workout carbs if you work out for a long time. I'm gonna finish this meal and I will check up with you guys once I eat again. All right, so I'm having my pre-dinner uh, meal, which would be meal number three for me today. 
So it's gonna be a ratio yogurt, which is 25 grams of protein. And it is 60 grams of blueberries, 47 grams of granola, and 25 grams of some chunky peanut butter. So I'm gonna enjoy this, and um, then we have dinner. All right, so it is 8 p.m., time for my dinner. So today I'll be eating another meal prep, which I made. Hopefully the video is up here. Hopefully that one is uploaded as well. But you can see it's a lot of broccoli, but it is a, actually a beef um, dish. So I can get any out here. It's a beef-based dish. So I'll put the picture on screen for um, why I'm eating beef before I go to sleep instead of eating my chicken meal. So basically there was that chart that I showed before that I'll show again. Um, and it shows that casein protein takes much longer to digest, meaning optimally before you go to sleep, you want to have about a scoop of casein protein. Now my casein protein powder has not came in the mail yet and I'm out of it. So meat also has kind of that same effect where it takes a little bit longer to digest and the protein breaks down a little slower. So it's better to have right before you go to sleep. There's also a lot of fiber in this meal because there's a lot of veggies, including broccoli, carrots, peppers, all that type of stuff. So it does help a lot um, with slow digestion. And I don't eat anything else for the rest of the night. It's only 8 p.m. And I will only eat breakfast tomorrow, so about 10.30 a.m. So it is about a 14-hour fast, um, which I do try to avoid a little bit. I, it's sort of intermittent fasting. I just like to eat dinner, and I don't like to eat breakfast right when I wake up because I'm always hungry then. So yeah, so I'm eating beef in my last meal because it's slow digesting, and uh, I'll go through my supplements that I take right before I go to sleep, and we will end the video. All right, so according to science, um, creatine is by far the best supplement, which I've already probably say I agree with. Caffeine is also up there at number two, which I took with my pre-workout, obviously. Citrulline is in their tier four of supplements. I'll put that like on screen right now of like what's good to take and how much to take of each. But they do say one thing, which is very interesting to me, which is BCAAs, such as glutamine, which is what I take here, are basically useless, um, which is pretty interesting to me because, you know, I thought they were pretty useful. But according to science, they're pretty useless, and it actually makes sense when you read about it. So I may stop buying BCAAs, which um, thanks to the science of the book. But yeah, I'm going to take my creatine and my glutamine for now and uh, check in you guys before you go to sleep. All right, so before we go to sleep, we're gonna go over the last supplements I take, which would be, I take vitamin C, um, which is just literally a thousand milligrams of vitamin C here. I take a multivitamin one a day, which is all of these. It's gonna be hard to read, especially if it's backwards, don't know if it is, sorry. Um, I take ashwagandha. I only take one pill, so I take 500 grams. I'm not focusing, but take 500 grams of ashwagandha. I also take Nightburn, which is the last thing I take, which is uh, three milligrams of melatonin and 120 milligrams of ashwagandha, along with some like stuff to help you burn calories while you sleep. It's some bullshit that came with my stack that I bought, so it was free. But yeah, that's gonna be the whole video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll try to help all you guys if you wanna set up your like BMR and calories and all that type of stuff. I'm looking, I might increase my fat intake instead of my carbs, because I'm eating a lot of carbs now, 374 grams of carbs is a lot. So I might want to increase my fat to about 25 to 30%, just because it's a little easier to get fat calories in, as long as it fills me up. If I'm hungry, then I will always stay with carbs, but I'm considering going to fat. So uh, let me know what you guys think about that. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like the video, comment, anything you have questions on, I'll, I'll try to answer it. And make sure you subscribe, it really helps me out. And I'm just starting out, new YouTuber, obviously, as you guys can see, putting a lot of work into this stuff, so yeah. Check out the TikTok, post all the recipes there. Check out the Instagram, also post some fitness videos there. Yeah, I got it. See you guys in the next one. Peace.